Thanks for joining us, everyone. If you're watching live um, on the YouTube page, feel free to say hi in the chat. We'll be monitor monitoring that while Mary and I share today. Um, my name is Mike Fricano. I'm a Postbase's EDU ambassador and a K6 technology integration specialist. And uh, today we have Mary Reeves Howard joining us. You want to introduce yourself, Mary? Sure. Yeah, it's just Mary Howard or at Mrs. Margaret. Howard one way on Twitter. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm a sixth grade teacher and I'm from Grand Island, New York, which is a little island shaped like a pork chop near Niagara Falls. <laughs> and you've been, uh, you've been doing a lot of things with the new Merch Cube add on. I'm a little bit. This Christmas time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a little bit obsessed with it. It's really amazingly awesome. I, I think I speak for a lot of teachers out there where, you know, we have the, we have the cubes and you know we just we want the capability and it's almost like co spaces read our minds you now suddenly we're able to adapt and, and create these things for our cubes for the kids and or have the kids do it to be honest with you and that's exciting so i you know dove right in and then trying to create things and trying to share what i'm creating because i want everybody else to be just as excited yeah so you um you you share i think what was one of the first projects you share was the book review cube was that like the first thing you shared? Or was it something before that? No, no, that was the first one. Yeah, um, that, was, that was super popular. Everybody loved. I know. The book you. And it was sort of just like, really and, cool. and that's what we're going to share today. But it was really yeah, just yeah. a repurposed um, uh, PowerPoint that I had done for. I think I was trying to mesh six slides together into a photosphere. And I found a photosphere um, site that would knit these slides together and it worked pretty well. And so that's yeah. where this came from. And so I, I was looking at these six slides from the inside out and then I saw CoSpaces and Merge Cube and I'm like, well, this is six slides that I can now look at from the outside in. And so yeah. all the work had already been done and I'm like, I'm just gonna give this a try. And then I tweeted it out and I'll share it in a few minutes, but yeah, it was, yeah. It was pretty People amazing to see it. the response. Yeah, such a great idea. And then you did a um, a snow globe. No, that was <laughs> a really was, cool idea. There was one in the middle, um, and oh, that's yeah, yeah. for James because um, if you haven't seen James McCreary yesterday, he he um, live streamed um, his invention when it comes to breakouts. It was like a digital dice, and I'm a little bit obsessed mm -hmm. with that. But it's just a little too much coding for me just yet. But um, you know, integrating that coding piece was amazing. So, but I took the easy route and I just created a six-sided breakout cube where, and I actually did use it in the class where the students kind of follow this path around the cube and they have to solve math problems or they have to figure out the numbers along the path in the cube. And it was the same concept as the book review, to be honest. It was six yeah. slides, you know, attached to the cube. And that was neat. And then the follow-up, yes, was that snow globe, which was has also been wildly popular. Lots of people have been reaching out to asking me how I did it, and, and I did, did make a tutorial did, for that one. Yeah, you did. Did, did your kids make uh, create snow globes? Well, I'm right now. I'm laid up on the couch with a substitute teaching oh, for right. me, right. but that's she's right. doing it, and it's really pretty cool. No to just sit, you yeah, it's, sit and watch. Yeah, that's she, awesome. I mean, it's, it's that easy, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's, yeah, that just did us like remote control teaching. But no, I left, you know, video tutorials. And so each day she shows my video tutorial of, okay, today you're going to create the globe. And then tomorrow you're going to, you know, edit your picture. And then the next day you're going to decorate. But because they'd already been in co-spaces, a lot of that learning curve is pretty flat. It was just. Yeah. You know, oh, I was going to ask how, how many, or I guess how many projects or how long have your students been working in co-spaces so far? Has it been um, this whole year? No, much? just. Just since that first book review, to be honest with you, that was oh, wow. yeah, that was the first thing I did, and I only did that with my ELA students. And then um, I did another project in between with my science students. So that's eighty kids that I had in co spaces, and they actually created um, it was the States of Matter cube, really involved project. But I got uh, part of the idea from I think it was uh, Ditch That Textbook, um, Matt, mm -hmm. I think it's Matt, Matt, Matt Miller. Matt Miller, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm pretty sure it was him that gave me the idea to take Google Slides and you can animate um, on the slides. And mm -hmm. so I had the students animate molecules, solids, liquids, and gas. And so they used a Google Slide deck to animate the solid and create a GIF. Then they animated liquid molecules. I remember seeing that. That yeah. was really cool. Yeah, and then so we created those. 
Um, first, we had to create the GIF files. Then we had to go into CoSpaces and upload the GIF files and then add the, the additional details. And so that was probably the biggest project that I've done so far with the Merge Cube and CoSpaces. Yeah, and, and now now you can, all, all the GIFs are pretty cool, but you can, um, you can upload video into CoSpaces now, too. Have you, have you thought of any ideas for that? Yes, but I'm going to keep them a secret right now. Okay, okay, okay. 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 No. I'm sure we'll see them in the new year. <laughs> You'll see them in the year. And I'll, I'll give you a teaser, cool. though. The one I'm thinking about is a Martin Luther King project. Um, uh, because January 21st being um, MLK Day, I've got some thoughts on how I can integrate student voice as well as video um, and kind of that snow globe concept with a project for MLK. So that's kind of what cool. I'm dabbling in right so you're, now. So you're, are you thinking of using the uh, the new built-in audio recorder and, and video uploader? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'm excited so to see that. I'll, let, I'll keep you posted. <laughs> cool. Definitely. Right now, it's still right here, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's still an idea, right? Exactly. But I'm sure it's, it's going to be awesome. You, you come up with some pretty amazing ideas. So that's why I wanted to bring you on to share. I, I think your your book review was, the, the, the book review cube was a pretty popular uh, project idea, and everybody really hooked onto it. So I'd, I figured I'd, you know, I'd, I'd ask to bring you on and see if you can demo or, or showcase, you know, how to, how, how, you know, what the process is uh, to create one of those. Yeah. Um, so that's why, yeah, so you're here today. I really appreciate it. I'm really excited to learn how um, it's, it's all put together. Well, it's, you know what, it was the catalyst for me. And I think because it's so approachable and, and I think James yesterday had, had 10 steps. I think I've got this boiled down to uh, five, <laughs> five pretty simple steps. Well, that's um, a challenge for you, James. Not that I'm competitive or anything, <laughs> no, no, no. but, no, no, no. No. but being an, you know, an easy approachable um, project, it's great because then you're like, oh, well, I did this. Well, now let me try this. Um, and what's yeah. also really cool about it, and when I when I demo it today, it's really neat to see what the kids do, too, because in my head, I was just yeah. like, oh, okay, we've got six slides here. We're going to decorate six sides of the cube. But as you know, once you get kids in co-spaces, it's like, oh, I can put a character down. I can animate can the character. This. I can, can do, do this. That. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so I ended up with book reviews in the middle of entire, like, fantastical wonderlands, which was okay. Cool. You know, they, they were excited. So it's fun. Awesome. Well, uh, you want to get your screen share going? And um, while you do that, I just want to let everyone know that's watching live. If you're on the YouTube page watching us right now, there's a chat box off to the right. And uh, if you have any questions for Mary or any thoughts or ideas to share, toss them in that chat. I'll be monitoring that chat box while Mary shares and demos um, her project. And um, I'll try to, uh, to interject every now and then if we have a question or a thought to share. Just so we know okay. you're still out there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Mary. So uh, why don't you take it away and show us how uh, the process for creating that uh, book review uh, merge queue project. Sure. And I'm going to go backwards a little bit before I go forward um, in case we do have any viewers out there that don't even know what the merge cube is or what uh, CoSpaces is. And uh, so we've got this quick little slide just saying, you know, the merge cube, when I discovered it, I literally typed in my browser, hold a hologram in your hand. And merge cube popped up and I was like, well, this is pretty cool. Let me see what this is. Went to the store and, and bought one for $15.99. And then lo and behold, as, as many of us know, we can find them sometimes for a dollar at Walmart. So um, that's kind of exciting. And then this huge wave went across, I think, the world of teachers running to stores trying to get a dollar uh, merge cubes. And merge cube is great. You know, it has a lot of built in apps that work with it that show augmented reality. And yet a lot of us, especially if we're pursuing, you know, ISTE certification or looking at ISTE standards, we want to be able to have students design things or we want to be able to design. And so that's kind of where CoSpaces came into the picture. Um, and CoSpaces integrated with MergeCube recently, and it allows you to design and edit on the merge cube, something that can actually be, be viewed in augmented reality on the merge cube. So um, I'm going to take you in CoSpaces today. And if you are someone who's interested in a, a free pro trial account, I've got a code down here, CoSmaryHO. And I think Michael also has one um, that he shares all the time. Um, I don't know what off the top of my heart, if you're still there. Oh, it's OK. Use, use Mary's. <laughs> <laughs> OK, fine. Use mine. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so if yeah. you want to. 30 days of pro, 
Yeah, that's the best part. It's it's 30 days. And, and my rationale too was, oh, I can do a lot with my kids in 30 days. So let me start with this book review. And so I had my three free 30 day trial and I'm like, all right, here we go. Let's do the book review. And to be honest, the book review only took us uh, three days. It, it was a real, maybe not even a full three days. Yeah, it was a real quick project. So this was the original um, tweet. And I'm actually going to share it because it's the best way for me to show you what it looks like on the Merge Cube. And when I tweeted this out, I was just holding the cube, the Merge Cube. And these are the slides that were on it. I had a character on here kind of just saying, I'm from this novel. And then I showed each side of the cube and how it can be represented as a book summary. And so that's what we're actually going to create today in CoSpaces. We're going to make ourselves a little book cube. And I think, I can't remember if there cool. was a bottom on it or not. Yeah. So that was the original tweet that started it all off. So if you're going to make this project, your starting point really is with Google Slides. And honestly, you could do it with PowerPoint as well. I just happen to be in a gaff school and do a lot with um with Google. And so I created a slide deck of six slides that are five by five, because you're going to be putting them on a square. So you do want them evenly proportioned. Um, and if you're not familiar with how to modify the size of a slide, if you go to page setup, you can just customize the size to be five by five. And so this is something I'm also sharing out to users. If they're interested, you can have this set of slides to edit for yourself and, you know, customize the way you like. And so each slide has a different task that the students need to complete based on a novel that they've read. So, you know, the first part of the project was very much ELA. It's very much, you know, title, author, genre, summarize your novel, provide a rating. I had them like pour with a little bucket tool into the stars and, you know, what color, oops, well, don't pour orange in there because it's already orange. Um, pour the colors in there, rating their novel, establishing the setting and describing it, and then finally say a little bit about the characters. So once these slides are all filled out, that was one day of instruction, technically speaking, then you need to save each of these slides as a JPEG. I just go like this, file, one slide at a time, download as, JPEG, and it will download. So we'll just use this slide deck for our experiment here today. So we're gonna go download as, JPEG, to my knowledge, there isn't the faster way to do this, but whenever I say things like that, somebody always corrects me. So this is just the way I do it. I don't know if there's a faster way. Michael, maybe you know of a faster way. Okay, so I've got those Actually, six yeah, slides. I think, that's, I think that's the only way. I, you know, like I hold the shift key down, but you can't download them like that. It only takes one. It only gives you the current slide every time I try to like group them together. So, and the kids were fine with it. You know, they got one slide at a time. Okay, so once you're done with your slides, then that's when you're going to be setting up your Merge Cube space. So you're going to be going into your Co Spaces account. And then there are three little things you need to do in order to start your space. So we're going to go on Co Spaces. And we're in this third icon down, which is the My Spaces section. And I'm going to click Create Space. And I'm going to create a Merge Cube space. And voila, you have yourself there a blank Merge Cube. And essentially what you're going to be doing is you're going to be uploading the slides that you just downloaded. And then you're going to be applying them to each side of this Merge Cube. And before I do that, one of the first things I like to do when I'm working in the CoSpaces platform with the Merge Cube is I like to unlock the Merge Cube first. So I right click and unlock the Merge Cube. And then if you click on the Merge Cube, you get this little builders. I call this the builders panel. I don't know what it's officially called, but that's what I've been calling it. And it really is important that you know the different features that are here in the builders panel. Um, for the Merge Cube, I like to lift it up because I have to access that bottom slide and I have to attach something to it in a little bit. So I'm gonna to need to be able to see that bottom of the cube. So I do put it in the air when I'm first getting started in order to see all the sides of it. And plus, when you go into play mode, you can't even see the bottom of the cube unless you've lifted it off of the builder's platform. So it's a really good first step. And all that was is I right clicked and I unlocked the cube and then I did a regular click on the cube and I used this tool to raise it up in the air. Okay, so that's step one. Then down here, 
I've been calling this the resources tab. Don't know its official name, but that's what I've been calling it. Um, and if you click on that resources tab and I'm in the upload section, I'm going to upload all of those files that I just took from my Google Slides. They're pretty simple to upload. I've been successful just dragging and dropping them. And what they'll do is they'll go in your um, little panel there, but they'll also end up on the builder's platform next to your cube. And that's perfectly fine unless you don't like a messy area Oops, to work with. I think I just uploaded only five of them. We're missing one. Got to go back. <laughs> We're missing. Okay. But, uh, yeah. what, um, what kind of devices do you work with? Or do your students work with? Um, my kids do have Chromebooks, but I have a cart that is shared. And then um, we also have access to a lab. And so I'll often take them in the lab. Oh, uh, okay. Cool. Okay. So let me look at my colors here. I have blue, pink, purple. Which one did I miss? Oops. Orange, And that's, green. that's the benefit of color coding these, right? Yeah, I missed the red <laughs> it's one. Really easy to tell which one you're missing. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm sure students have done this too, yeah. Oh, they did. Yeah, they absolutely did. All right, so download as. It was especially difficult when we were navigating 25 slides because we were creating anim animations. Then it got to be a real challenge having oh, to keep boy. track of their slides. <laughs> yeah. OK, so we're back here, and we've got our last one, which is the red one. OK, so they're all uploaded, and they're in my resources. But I can just click on this again to close the tab. And you can see that I've got all the slides sort of sitting all over the, the place. So now what we need to do is we need to get them on the merge cube. I didn't give my kids a precise order that I wanted this in, um, but they typically followed the pattern I provided to them. And it's so easy to attach images to the merge cube. If you um, right click on an image, there's an attach option. And if you look, the cube just got a whole bunch of blue dots on the center of each side. And so if you click on that blue dot, you're gonna attach it to the side that you click. I like to attach them first, and then after they're all attached, I stretch them into um, the, the correct size. So I'm going to get these all attached first. So I'm right clicking, attach, put this one that's on a, the side. That's a really smart tip because I think, you know, I don't think many people realize that the, the attach feature is there. And I, I think even for me, because I, I, I work on iPads and the iPads don't have the attach feature. Oh. When you're on a, on a computer in the web version, you have it, and it's a lot easier to position in the center like you're doing right now. Yes, that would be difficult to get them positioned and stretched to the right shape and everything. Yeah, I love the attach feature. Yeah. Um, some of the things that I'm doing navigation wise to move the builder's platform like this, I'm just holding and holding the mouse down and dragging and that's allowing me to rotate the cube around. Okay, so right click attach. We're going to put this one on this side and we've got this little pink straggler over here. Right click. I'm actually on a Mac right now, so I am doing a control click to get these attached, but most of us at schools, uh, well, not I shouldn't say most of us, many of us would be using a uh, regular mouse unless you're on a Chromebook, and then it's going to be a two-finger click. And then once again, we're going to get this guy attached, and this is what, why I uh, lifted up the cube. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, uh, what kinds of devices do your students use um, to view their merge cube space? There's really a variety of things we use. Um, I don't typically, usually I'll let them look at it after they finish creating it because that's kind of that exciting moment that's, you know, it's done and it's been created. And so I have um, a set of, we have a roaming cart of iPads, so I'll often borrow 25 iPads. Um, I have five iPads in my classroom. And I'll often use those to do maybe a gallery walk or do stations. And so like with this, I would set up maybe the five cubes and have a QR code for the book review next to the cube. Then they come over with the iPad, scan the code and view it on the cube and then do a gallery walk and provide feedback to each other on the work that they've done. Cool. And that tends to be a really good way to do it. Yeah. Um, with, with the science projects, again, when I went back to the QR code thing, because it's it's just such a powerful way to get you know the object into their hands, we actually glued our QR codes to our science projects right into our interactive notebooks. And then I sent the kids home with a foldable cube, and I said, uh, you know, show this to your parents. And so they went home and used their own devices and showed the project to their parents at home. Very so, smart. Yeah, they, they were excited about that. And a lot of parents were like, thanks a lot. Now I've got Merge Cube on the kids' Christmas <laughs> list. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> not sorry. Yeah, sorry, not sorry, exactly. Now, I was just asking that question because someone, um, Enrique in the chat, was asking uh, about um, how they view it in AR. And so I, that's why I was asking what kind of devices you so your So your students build on a Chromebook or yeah. in your computer lab. 
and then you have iPads that they use afterwards to to view their their spaces. Yes, their and I do let my kids bring in their own devices too. I you know I'll send a note home. You, I used Remind and actually pushed the links out to the CoSpaces app, both the Google Play and the iOS. And I said, you know, to the parents, if it's, you know, if they have your permission, have them download one of these apps on their own personal device. And, you know, the next day they'll be able to use it in class. And that worked pretty well. I had about maybe five or six kids in each class with a device that they were able to um, use. And they were pretty excited about that because we're pretty, pretty locked down when it comes to allowing personal use of devices in my school. They, they don't let the students use them very often. So as long as they have teacher permission, they're allowed. Um, and just to give you kind of a sneak preview. So this is, you know, we're in the building space right now. Um, you get to preview what it looks like in AR by clicking the play button. And so really, this is all we have right now is just we just have a small image on each side. But it does give me a good idea of what it's going to look like when I finally do view it in AR on the app. All right, so now we're on to a third step here, and that is going to be stretching these out. I mentioned before the building panel, I guess you could call it. This is um, an important one to be familiar with. It's very, very easy in the book review here because all you have to do now is stretch these to fit each side. Um, this one I found really tricky at first to use. I kept clicking on it. I'm like, why is this not doing anything? Why is it not doing anything? And then, of course, there's that lovely little reminder saying drag to scale. And then I realized that all you have to do is hold the mouse down and drag, and that will size it. Oh, no, I just sized it again. <laughs> Next one. There we go. So we're going to drag these to fit each side. Yeah, so using using that attach feature is definitely helpful because it stays centered it right while you're doing that. So it makes it super easy to do this. So That's you use good. iPads when you do it? Yeah, so I, I'm at a one-to-one -one iPad school. So we... Oh, nice. We mainly use iPads. I mean, it, it's good. I mean, it keeps it mobile, and our kids are able to. Our older kids are able to take their iPads home. But but CoSpaces is missing a few key features on the iPad right now, like the the attach feature for one, and the the ability to group objects together is not available on iOS either. So hopefully, okay. cross our fingers. Hopefully that comes to iOS or or, or to mobile soon. Yes. Yeah, so there, there are some benefits to doing it on a on a computer. Yeah, that. even I find just manipulating with the mouse yeah, um, yeah. versus a Chromebook too. Um, it's just mm -hmm. a little easier, you know, for some of our um, you know, needier students with uh, fine motor skill issues too. So now we got it on each side, and so I guess I said that was step three, and really step four is going to be, you know, Ooh. I let the students, and I was telling Michael earlier, that, you know, they they kind of ran away with this on me. I was just really only asking them to have six sides. They were like, but can I put a character in? Can I have the character talk? Can I have the character, you know, quote from the book? Can I do this? Can I add some, you know, things that would be in the setting of the story? And I'm like, guys, just go for it. Yeah, and they, you know, boy, they did. Yeah. So I'll very quickly just kind of demonstrate something pretty simple as if you find a character that oh. you want to use, you can, you know, drag the character onto the builder's platform and position it. So that's the up and down position tool. We haven't really talked about this one. This one allows you to sort of slide things into place by pulling mm -hmm. on these arrows. Just wanted to give um, a quick shout out to Gabe Haydu. I think I, hopefully I said that right. Haydu, Gabe. But uh, Gabe's a, he's a, a Merge Cube fanatic and um, a, a great educator. He's put out some videos. He, he asked a, a really good question though, and I think it's a, a good tip for your students. He said, can the faces be grouped first and then you resize them all simultaneously. I would imagine they yeah. could. I just that's a really cool idea. That. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. There's that's one easier, step. definite easier step. I love it. <laughs> just probably hold down the shift key, click on each of the faces, select them all. Yep. Stretch them yeah. on. Yeah, I love it. So I will do that next time. Cool. <laughs> Like I said, Thanks, whenever I think I'm doing something right, there's always somebody that says, but you know, you can do it this way. But that's <laughs> the, awesome. The power of the community, right? You, you got it. <laughs> yeah. So now we have this adorable little character up here, and we can pretend this is a character from the novel. Um, we can have her animated in some way, maybe doing an action. Let's have her dancing. Why not? And I like the fact that we can add a speech bubble up here and have her maybe thinking or saying something from the novel. Um, I'm introverted and like to read maybe mm -hmm. characterization uh, aspect. So what, what kind of books do your, do your kids read in your class? Well, we do, you know, pleasure reading um, throughout the course mm -hmm. of the year. So they do that almost every single day. And then we have four different novels we read. 
throughout the year. Um, the one we're getting ready to start, well, we did a mystery novel first. It was Deep, Dark, and Dangerous by Mary Downing Hahn. Um, and that I actually do as a read aloud because it's just such a gripping novel. And yeah. then we do, um, the next one is called, I can't believe I have to do this. And I do a lot of Socratic seminars with that book because it's got a lot of big issues for the kids to discuss. And so that's the second one we do. And then we do um, a book, Perry T. Cook, about a, a little boy that kind of grows up in a prison and it's got some interesting um, aspects to it. And then we finish the year with the Westing game. And that one, I do a lot of work with virtual environments in the Westing game because you can create a mansion, you know, a haunted mansion, and the kids can go into this haunted virtual mansion yeah. and you can hide things and scare them because there's nothing better than scaring the kids. <laughs> nice. Nice. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, okay. So what we have here really is very, very basic. And like I said, for me, this was the Coast Spaces Catalyst. This is what got me started because I'm thinking this I can do with my kids. I'm not scared. It's just a bunch of slides that I've attached to the cube and it was a really good starting place and it was pretty much my students that took me to the next level um because they discovered the characters and that they could change this you know add setting around the cube and everything else so um that's really all there is to that it, it's a pretty straightforward project um you mentioned earlier that i have done a couple of other projects i've been brainstorming even more um, if you can do a book summary, you can certainly do a plot summary too. So yeah. I brainstormed, you know, five slides, six slides, um, for plot. And then last night I was actually thinking like the social studies teacher that I used to be and thought bio cubes would be a really cool thing. Oh, I like that idea. Yeah. To create. Cool. So I actually made one, I think I shared it out in the co-spaces gallery last night. Um, a bio cube, you know, so a, a character person, place, time period, challenges they faced, personal background, personality traits, significance, and I don't remember what's on the bottom. <laughs> Important quotes. Hey. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Um, you know, so that was another idea that I had last night thinking we could do that. And, and I had already talked about the breakout cube and I used this one in my science class last week, actually, um, gave them, you know, an iPad and I gave them the QR code to this breakout cube and they had to figure out the numbers, but then these numbers corresponded with, um, I call it a Polybius cipher. It's one of those grids where you have mm -hmm. to take the one and the two and you find something else and the two and the five and you find something. And so they collected a series of vocabulary words and then they had to use those vocabulary words to figure out that a hidden word and it was kind of complex but we do a lot of breakouts so they were fine oh, um cool. yeah and then the last two little ideas that i had shared with you too this is the science one i talked about with the the changes of matter the animated um animated side showing the states that the molecules would be in that was pretty complex to create but it was a really awesome project and then the snow globe, um, if you want to look at it, there's a URL for people to look at. But yeah, this, this is, is what cool. my, yeah, that's what the kids are doing right now. Let me show you an example of that. And um, I get constant messages from the students as they're and I even added animated snow, thanks to you. <laughs> Using so, a GIF. Yeah. 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 It awesome. was a... Um, we had just finished our poetry unit. And so we had been studying different forms of figurative language, hyperbole, personification, similes, metaphors. Mm. And I added puns in there because I'm a huge pun person. And so I gave them a little template to write something about being trapped in a snow globe. And then the same idea, this was just a slide. And then the rest of it was in a little slightly more advanced building. So it's almost getting them to kind of progress into a little more complicated builds. Cool. So the, the cube is hiding under that that uh, cone there? Sort of, I kind of made the cube disappear. I changed oh, okay, the transparency okay. uh, on the cube smart. to nothing. Yeah, and that made it disappear. And then this was just the ellipsoid. Mm -hmm. And again, I changed the transparency on this. If you click material, well, um, I said transparency, it's listed as opacity, mm -hmm. but yeah, 47, 50 it makes it see through. And there you have your, your globe. That's awesome. And this was something else in materials too, that I found and I just kind of shrunk it down and added it. And there's so many great things in the library too, as you know. Yeah. yeah. Like, and then even in the, so yeah, the, so the, the library is pretty expensive, but then you have the 3d models. Yeah. Category that's like, <laughs> exponentially grows the 3D library. 
Yeah, you just yeah. go crazy. There's so many things to use and, or upload and create. Have you, uh, oh, that's my, sorry, that's my bell. Have you uh, had your kids explore the, the code blocks tool yet to code any actions or anything like that? Any no, it is on yeah. my list. Okay. Um, we did our first coding project in class this <clears throat> year um, with some scratch coding. Awesome. So they've been exposed to drag and drop coding a little bit. And so mm -hmm. I think, you know, moving forward, I've got to conceptualize what the project will be, but um, yeah. I can see that in my future. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I mean, if they have experience with Scratch, they'll, they'll, they'll pick up on the code blocks super easy. The question is, will I? <laughs> <laughs> That's the scary that part. It doesn't matter. Just let, them, just let them go with it. You're right. And when I they know. ask you a question, you say, I don't know, ask ask a friend of yours. <laughs> ask a friend. You're not, you know, it is so, I, I do. I love hearing you say that because, you know, I'm the tech advocate in my building and I say that to other teachers and they're just kind of like, seriously. <laughs> but it's true. Like really say, ask, like ask three, not me. Ask three, not me, yes. Because <laughs> you have plenty yeah. of other experts in the room, right? And, and it's that's, I think, what's going on right now. Now, I'm not in school this week, but they're doing these snow globes. And um, as I kind of peer into, you know what, we could peer into the classroom right now. As I sort of peer into their work, um, you know, I can see, okay, somebody finished now. And you know, he was finished oh, first, and, you know, somebody yeah. else is going to kind of go on and um, help the other person if they're finished early. You can kind of see all of that happening. How, how did you do the pictures of themselves with a transparent background? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. Okay, so I found... A site, and someone actually tweeted out an even better site today. But I saw that today. I saw that. <laughs> isn't that always the case? But I wanted yeah. to find one that wasn't blocked at school and, um, oh, okay. and was easy for the kids to use. And so this photo scissors online came up for me. And um, you just upload an image. You don't need to download it to your computer. It's web-based. Cool. You just upload an image. Of course, finding an image in this nightmare on my computer is going to be rather difficult. But um, that's okay. So basically, it just it, it trims the the outside of the photo and makes it transparent. Yeah, I've got a little astronaut yeah. I can try with. Here we go. Oh, cool. um, okay. It sort of like um, asks you what you want to keep and what you want to get rid of. And so oh. with the plus, you sort of just kind of, and you don't have to be real detailed and specific. It's pretty smart, especially with a picture like this that has lots of, you know, dark lines. You uh -huh. sort of give it a general idea of what to keep. And then with the red, you give it a general idea of what to discard. And it actually kind of does it as you go along. You can see it's oh, already gotten red. That. Yeah. And so it's sort of just a, for the kids, it's just tracing. And look how much it took away. It's... I nice. liked it because it was really, yeah, there I'm done. It was really intuitive and, oops, sorry, and did that very quickly. And then we saved it. So they, they took pictures with, like, their Chromebook or with the iPads? or. Um, we took the pictures. We took the pictures myself um, oh, in okay. front of a green screen earlier in the year. They weren't supposed to be for this project, but I just, I had taken them for a different project and never used them. So I took all of their photos oh, and uploaded perfect. them to one Google folder and I shared the folder. And so they went onto Google Classroom, accessed the Google folder and found their photo and then downloaded it, uploaded it here to Photo Scissors. And then they were able to get rid of the, uh, the background. And that was how they started their, their snow globe. And, and I, I heard you mention you, you took those photos on a green screen now. I'm, I'm sure, I, I assume that would make this process a lot easier too. Yeah, similar color background. Yeah, I think it did, but I did test it without having the green screen, and it worked just fine too. You know, because I knew I was going to be recommending the project to other teachers, so you don't have to have a green screen. I just happened to have those photos on my camera roll, so it worked for yeah. me. Yeah. Gabe, a uh, Gabe in the chat. Um, he was just saying he, uh, an, an easy option on mobile devices is an app called Sticky AI. You said it instantly okay. erases background or adds a green screen background. That's cool. So there, there's a Ooh. mobile option for everyone out there. I have to check that out. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. This is great. Yeah. So photo onlinephotoscissors.com. Dot com. Cool. And there was yeah. one being shared out today. I can't remember the the website, but there was one that's kind of reached. I, uh, I did um, retweet it too. Yeah, I yeah? saw it this morning. Let's see if I can find it really fast. That's good. 
kind of gone viral. Here today. it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it, it was Eric Kurtz, I think, that originally yes. shared it. That's it was right. It was Eric. Down, he, yeah. he put himself in a paradise. <laughs> he did. <laughs> it's remove.bg, uh, okay. which makes sense. Remove.background. So yeah. easy to remember. I didn't get a chance I to play with that yet. I'm not mistaken. From what I heard, that remove.bg is. Yeah, you don't have to do like what you did here, where you color in spaces like the, the positive and negative. It, I think it's supposed to try to figure it out on its own, if I'm not mistaken. So it's yeah, more it's like an automated. Yeah, back around in five seconds. Yeah, 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 with no clicking. So, their the computers are rapidly becoming it's better and better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if you want, I can show. We could put that astronaut in a snow globe as long as we're at it here. Yeah, let's try it. All right, we'll cool. save the astronaut. Oh, I saved him twice. All right, let's see here. So we're going to create a new merge cube space. We've got our merge cube. And see if I have my steps in the process memorized. Put me on the spot here. No. So we go to the building items. And the first item I used is this cone fustrum. Such fancy names. For... Oh, I know. I <laughs> said, can you trust them to use the fustrum? So then I <laughs> stretched out the fuss room and made it real flat. So that's how I got my original base. So yeah. did you give your and students a template for this or did they build their snow globe from, from scratch? I, I gave them step-by-step -step directions and I videotaped myself ah, doing it. Cool, cool. So they watched my video tutorial, yeah. Um, and then for this one too, um, I made the merge cube smaller, which again, ah. I first realized you so I do leave the merge cube in the uh, in the scene for a little while longer before mm -hmm. um, I finally make it invisible, just because it helps a lot with getting things centered and dimensions and everything else. And yeah. Again, I am not a trained professional, so I'll, I am sure there's better ways to do this. I made all this up on my own. Oh, that's good. That's good. And then there's your, you put the ellipsoid in. We're going to stretch him out. Get that into position again. Try to get it centered. Sometimes for me is the biggest a bit tricky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Getting it just oops, replace. Okay, now I'm stretching it. I don't want to do that. I want this one. Have you had that moment too when you're trying to position something and it looks absolutely perfect, and then you change your perspective? Yeah, and like what? <laughs> <laughs> you're like it's not even close. That's way off. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's the tricky that's thing for, for students too, because they, you know, because you can change, you can, I mean, you can change your view, your scene from any angle. Sometimes they forget that it looks good from this angle, but yeah, when they turn it, it's like way up. And you realize it's like right <laughs> here, and yet it looks like it's perfectly yeah. lined up, and it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah, that so moment I'm, that you. <laughs> you're I'm, I'm constantly, uh, constantly reminding my students, you know, make sure you change your angle, tilt your view. You know, yeah, and it's a good, good chance to teach you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that word perspective, and then you can uh, mm -hmm. you know associate the word perspective with different perspectives in novels, and can make a nice ELA connection there. Um, so then the secret to getting this ellipsoid see through is in the opacity. So materials and opacity ah. make it transparent. Now we have a cute little snow globe, and then it's now that I scoot this over and I finally make the merge cube. Go bye bye. So then I just change its opacity to nothing. See ya. Bye. I love you, but no. <laughs> right now. So then we got a cute little snow globe. Nice. Yeah. And then we had that two astronaut. I'm oh, sorry. That's no, okay. I was just saying, it's just two shapes. I know. Isn't that crazy? Easy. Yeah. Yeah. So then we have our astronaut that we edited. A few minutes ago and and this is one of those situations too where you have to just do your best to position it and keep changing mm -hmm. your perspective to get them into place and if you put them in the middle don't unclick or you're going to have to dig around and try to find them because <laughs> they'll get lost in the middle yeah, i'm going to rotate him we haven't shown the rotate tool yet but i always call these hula hoops what do you tell your kids they are uh i did well i, I did call them by their axes but I love the hula hoop idea. I just, yep, I'm like, guys, just grab one of the hula hoops yeah. and rotate. Uh, and I messed up because he's now stuck inside. 
I want him this way. Getting there. There it goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Happens to me all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. And then, you know, to finish it off, what we did uh, was we had them go back into the library and find Christmassy things or holiday yeah. things and drag them out and put them into place. So we added presents and trees, and the Grinch made an appearance in quite a few of their cubes, I noticed. <laughs> yeah, I think there's and like actually, Santa Claus and sleigh and reindeer. There are so many great ones. There's a snowman. And then if you use the 3D models library, there's like so much more. I need to spend more time doing that. This one here. Yeah. So that's the that's connected to Google Poly. So you, you have access. You can search the Google Poly. Uh, uh, yeah, the, their, their website, and then yeah, all kinds of stuff in there. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I definitely have to spend more time there. And then your characters. If you want a friend in there, you don't want to be alone. The astronaut can hang out with the Grinch. <laughs> Kids love the Grinch. They're enjoying him a lot. <laughs> so essentially, that was it. And then we added. Uh, we added some more ellipsoids. Some of the kids kind of made themselves juggling snowballs and different, you know, different fun things. Cool. So that's just essentially it. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but. That's awesome. Yeah, there's your snow globe. <laughs> that's great. Thanks for showing us that. Sure thing. And if, you know, if people reach out to me, I'm happy to share. I have both a YouTube video showing all of the steps and I typed up um, a template and it's a step-by-step -step template of, okay, first do this, then do that. Cause we have different learners that can learn things different ways. So I'm happy to share that with you. I've been having a lot of people just direct message me on Twitter. Um, and I've been sending that their way. So this cool. is do, do you have a, do you have a website? This stuff is located to, or are you just sharing it on social media? Yeah, um, this is me here. It's your smarticles.blogspot.com. <laughs> cool. So you can see my most recent post is all about co spaces and the book review. Oh, awesome. Yeah, your smarticles.blogspot.com. Smarticles, yep. Cool. Oh, and you get the templates there too. Awesome. Yeah, templates there and the breakout challenges there so a couple of things for people to take a look at great thanks for making that awesome. available for everyone no problem i All really right. appreciate you having me on yeah you bet Mary. thank you so much for coming on and sharing both your book review and your snow globe project yeah i didn't think we were going to go that direction i'm glad we did it's very <laughs> yeah, timely that's great. <laughs> thank you like so much and, <laughs> yeah very trying to be festive <laughs> It's my last day of school too, so counting down oh, the hours. <laughs> your nice. your day's almost done. My day is halfway through. <laughs> okay. Almost. And, and I'm gonna have a white Christmas, so. <laughs> yes, I, I'll have a sunny Christmas, I think. <laughs> Hopefully, nice. cross my fingers. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Mary. Really appreciate you coming on and sharing, being a part of the community and showing us how to create those things. Thank you so much. My pleasure. I hope uh, I hope people give these things a try. Yeah, I think so. they will. And I want to say thanks to uh, our live viewers out there that were participating in the chat. Some good questions and some good ideas being shared there. Gabe, Gabe also shared that he uh, he has his kids um, create their own models in Tinkercad. Are you, are you familiar with, with yeah. Tinkercad, Mary? Yeah, so it's a great, oh, yeah. really easy to use 3D um, CAD tool. And I've then been you doing, can, uh, um, go ahead. I like the object viewer on the merge cube and yeah. uh, you know, we, at least last year, quite a bit, we would create artifacts for, cause I was social studies last year. We would create an artifact in Tinkercad or the students would, and then we would do gallery walks with object viewer in the merge cube and you know, they would share the uh, yeah. items they had created. So again, that was before the code spaces integration. So I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. So you can, so you, you can take those same Tinkercad files and you can drag them into co spaces. Now those STL files. That yeah. you save from Tinkercad and they become 3D objects in your code spaces scene. So, and you can attach an emerge cube. 
Yeah. Very yeah, cool. really cool. Yeah. Lots so of much. options out there. Lots of opportunities. I guess we know what we'll be doing on our break, huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm having more ideas. Kind of enjoy a little bit of it. Don't oh, don't get right. yourself too busy. <laughs> well, all right, thanks, thanks everyone so for watching. Yeah, thank you, Mary, and thanks everyone out there for watching live. This uh, this will be recorded as well, and it'll be posted up on YouTube, and we'll we'll share it out via the communities and um, our social networks as well. But I just want to wish you all Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and to you too, as well, Mary. Merry Christmas. Take care. All right. Take care, everyone.